As our world continues to depend on the use of pesticides, depleted soils and large-scale factory farming, there are those that choose instead to go against the grain. They're outliers in their respective domains. Last summer, we were fortunate enough to meet up with Richard Zufour. So Richard, how good is this soil originally? What did they tell you about this place? Well, I was told that it was meant to be pastured. That's it. The, uh, this is too heavy, not thick enough. There's not enough soil. So, and that's we have to work with. We have that, that, no, no alternatives. That's what we have to work with. He's really underestimating when he says, <laughs> not deep. You see how it's not even a foot deep. And this, is pure shale rock. This isn't clay, this is shale. <laughs> There's almost no soil. And what is here is the, some of the thickest clay I've ever seen. You could make pottery out of this clay. That's how thick it is. This is what he started with. Let's see the progress of what it can become. So those of you who are in a tough spot, let me say, gee, you got a treat coming. We're just on the edge of the property line. That's where we were. Richard just grafted this one this spring, and I don't see growth like this very often. Actually, never. How high is this one? Yeah, that's over two, two meters, over six feet. And it's grafted all the way down here. When? This was chip, chip bud. bud chip, yeah, grafted about a year ago. That is incredible growth. That is the potential of these soils if you do a few things right. So what is the, the main treatment that was done in, in this area? This is one of the oldest areas. Yeah, this is about four, four and a half years old. Um, we started out with about 12 inches, 30 centimeters of uh, wood chips. The year after it, it had shrunk by, by you know, four fifths and then we might have added you know a small layer a couple of years later and that's it a one-time big dose a one-time big treatment completely can unlock this soil and this is good but there's areas that are even better yep we're just going through the nursery and Richard claims that this Property is ideal for small fruit. And well, I couldn't let the small fruit go by because it is just dripping with fall bearing raspberries. Fall bearing, absolutely use fall bearing. They're so easy, just mow them down in the spring, let them come up and they fruit in the fall. But although he says it's, it's better for small fruit, the tree growth in here is phenomenal. It's incredible. Yeah, it's wild is, is the best word. But you know what? These raspberries are getting, are getting more ripe. <laughs> so what did you do in these, in these beds to uh, get them like this? We basically uh, formed some beds, 30 inch wide beds. We put the, uh, the standard- Soil, the, uh, raised soil. Uh, raised soil a bit, uh, standard with the BCS and then Put about a foot of uh, you know 30 centimeters or a foot of um, of wood chips and i don't know it sort of explodes when we do that after a year we have to wait a year for the um for, for the for the nitrogen um, to be restored in the in the soil and after that we might have you know added maybe a couple of inches maybe five centimeters of wood chips just to keep it always covered we never leave bare soil when you look at somebody's place, look for the growth. I mean, here's an example. <laughs> yeah. Look at this apple tree. It started here, this branch, and it's grown by, that's about 80 centimeters or two and a half feet. This is a young tree. It doesn't, it's not established. It's just a young tree in the nursery with that kind of growth. On dwarf, how much, dwarf how much fertilizer do you put? None. 
<laughs> no fertilizer. None. How much spraying have you done in here? Oh boy, uh, none. None, okay. <laughs> That's what you want to look for. When the plants are happy, and boy, let me tell you, they are happy. That, that's what's the result. Your soil is alive, and this isn't 50-year-old established soil. This is taking that potentially very fertile clay soil, but that isn't. That's got drainage issues. That's got really a huge lack of organic matter putting that organic matter, and that is really the key that's making this soil come alive. And what I wanna show you is the one, two, three, three year progression of how the soil goes from brick clay to being so really fertile and productive. Lishal, this is what you started with. Heavy, cracking clay, not very thick, but over your five years, you've learned what makes kind of your ideal setup. Uh, I see this isn't ground level. So why did you raise these up like this? Drainage is an issue. It's the, the you know, that, that's, that's the thing that we have to worry the most about, you know. So basically we, we, we have to, you know, scrape off some, 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 some clay, raise, do some raised beds. So raised then, bed is just clay. Just clay. Okay. So just raising clay. the clay. Just raising the clay. And then on top putting about a foot, 30 centimeters of, uh, of wood chips. So this is year zero. I mean, we just did this. Well, you uh, said a month ago about? About a month ago. And we're just about to plant uh, trees from our nursery. We we'll plant them there. We started putting posts and, you know, deciding which trees go, go, goes where. And, and uh, that'll be it for this year. When you say plant, are you planting your trees in the wood chip? Never, <laughs> never, never, never. So you actually move the wood chips out of the way, yeah, yeah. dig into the worked clay, because it's been moved around. Yeah. So it's not gonna be a solid cake like this. You dig through there, put your roots in the clay soil, yeah and spread the roots the best way we can because it's going to be bare roots once the trees uh, you know drop their leaves it's going to be a bare root tree we spread them the best possible way and then maybe facing the uh the wind, <laughs> the, the wind and um and that'll be it and then we cover it back to uh, with wood chips and then we'll you know just uh install our winter protection for voles rabbits and deers That'll be it for this year. Did that sound complicated? If some of you are in a, I know I've heard comments, oh, I wish I had your sandy soil. Well, I wish I had this kind of clay soil. You think, no, but it's, it's got its problems. Yes, he's learned how to work with this soil to really unlock. This soil is naturally so, so fertile. What happens when you add manure to this soil? <laughs> It's too much. It's, it's too basically much. too. It's over. It's overkill. You, you, you never want to put manure in, in there. Uh, so it's naturally so fertile. You don't need any extra fertility after you've unlocked the fertility that's in the clay with this amount of wood chips. And this is fresh. This is just done. What does it look like after a year? So this is your one year after the original treatment. You've had the wood chips, you piled the soil, the clay is piled, then the wood chips on top, and now it's had one year to do what? What happens in a year? Life just thrived. It took about a year. It doesn't look much after a year. Let's face it. If you, if you see this, uh, this apple tree over there, it's got established. It's, you know, it's not thriving. It was, you know, bare root transplanting. Um, but if you look closely, you know, the soil is starting to, you know, be full of life, full of um, mycelium. I if see we the... dig around, there's hardly, you know, there's about a couple of inches, two, three inches of wood chips. Underneath you have you know, that, that definitely doesn't look like the clay and it 
doesn't look like the wood chips. Put, put that stick in again. <laughs> I mean, this is not the clay. Right now, it's decomposed wood chips with a lot of elements of clay mixed in, because I'm sure there's a few worms in here. Oh, and boy. <laughs> And look at look at the moisture. Look at the yeah. We we haven't had, had rain for like three weeks ish. Yep, three weeks, and that is that is looking. This yeah. this this is just what it's supposed to smell. So if any of you ever make compost that you can't smell, know that that's not compost. If you can't stick your nose to it and smell it and take a deep breath, you've got alcohols, you've got ammonia in there. It's not compost. So please don't say, yo, I've got a, uh, that's a stinky pile. <laughs> that's not a stinky pile. It's basically mimicking a forest. And that's the whole, that's the whole purpose of doing all this. Doesn't look much, but we know the work is being done. It's down there, it's quiet. But when we look at, here, at a year from now, though year two, you'll see the type of growth we're getting just want to, because he did say something about it's mimicking what the forest is like. Forest soil becomes like this, but it's not in a hurry. A whole branch or a whole tree will fall and it can take 10, 20, 30 years for that tree to decompose in some species even longer. The difference here is by chipping the wood or the branches, not heartwood, mostly small branches, two inches or less, this has just sped up the forest creation of forest soil process. So yes, there is the addition of some energy to get there, but how much do you pay for all these wood chips? It must be expensive, such a big input. We're, <laughs> we're shooting, we're, we're aiming to be as little carbon intensive as possible. So whatever the city, the, the neighboring city, Boucherville in this case, when they chip wood, you know, dead ash, we had, um, you know, we had a, an ice storm, dead branches and everything. So the wood chips that would have been burnt otherwise is basically being dropped here. We ask for the city. So whatever the, is, whatever they produce in terms of, it's not garbage, but I mean, it's, it's unused uh, raw material. For us, it's cold. So we, we got about 20 trucks of, uh, of wood chips this year. So for them, it's, you know, it's, a few kilometers or a few miles away, just a few miles. Within the city, we're getting the wood chips free. Free. And we uh, try to uh, make the best out of it to create a, a, a you know, a forest uh, soil. And it, if, if, when you think about it, just a year. It takes a year. We speed up the process. Those of you who have access to this kind of material, wood chips, look at the tree trimming companies, look at the companies doing maintenance of power lines. They're often chipping them and they're just looking for a place to dump. In our part or in the farm's part, it's not free, it's expensive, but it's still worth it. I pay 50 to 100 bucks for a load. He just got 20 truck loads, do the math. So if you can get, get, you just get it, pile it, because even if, what would happen if this was piled and you didn't spread it and you didn't use it and you had a pile for five years, what would happen to it? Free compost. There you go. So even if you say, well, I'm not gonna make use of it right away, have it dumped, you're gonna have, actually that's a great place to make a future garden. <laughs> so this is the two year old area, but let me point out, this is a learning progress. This is trial and error. Many things have been tried. Some things work better than others. Dishaw, you were just mentioning how these hazelnuts, which this is two years old, these were down to nothing. They were dying last year. Yeah, it was too much rain. So we, we had to redig those trenches around this patch because you basically dug a hole this, this deep and water came, you know, uh, we're working with clay here, so it's a it's a work in pro progress. So we had to redig those trenches, and as soon as we redug them, we have growth of about a meter or even more, three four feet, even more so over there. That's a good lesson. Watch your plants. If they're not doing well, 
it's one of your basics. In this case, clay soil can be great, but boy, it can hold a lot of water. And if your drainage isn't resolved, if you don't figure out, and, and he's really figured out a beautiful way here to move water where he can create little dams on these paths to hold water if it's really too dry, or he could let that water go, but not leave the site. It simply goes into a pond, which could then, if needed, could be pumped back to the high spot to circulate through this site using these footpaths. Really well thought out, good design, simple. You can imagine just a solar panel with a little solar pump and pushing water and watering the whole thing. But when you get this amount of wood chips holding water with clay that really holds water, too much water can be a problem. But I wanna show you, this is also two years, but the drainage was resolved better from here and you said you did a, a lasagna technique here. What's, yeah. what's lasagna then? Well, it was a row of uh, sticks, basic, wood sticks, basically, and then some dirt, then some anything we, we branches, but with, with nitrogen. So anything with leaves and everything that we picked up everywhere. And then we go back again. So we make a lasagna of carbon, wood, and then uh, some soil to bring in the, uh, the, the, the microbes and um, mycelium and everything, and then some green. And then again, 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 we cover it up with cardboard and then 30 centimeters of wood chips. So as much as I've said, don't bury wood chips, the key detail that he shared is that when he puts a layer of soil underneath, there's branches, branches, complete branches are great to let air go way in. And he doesn't create those dead zones where there's just a lack of air. This is high and the path, so this is up to your knees, this bed. So about 30 to 40 centimeters higher. And I just have to show you the growth of this apple tree, two years since it was planted. This is a two year old apple tree. I mean, look at the plants, look at the growth, and you'll see if the plant is happy. When I see this kind of growth, this is a meter of growth, that's a lot, three feet of growth. It's still growing. We're in October already, and it's still growing. The other thing to notice, and I'm looking for it, there is no aphids. You'd think, gee, growth like that should be loaded with aphids. And it's not because it's later in the season, because aphid could still be active. It's just that the fertility is not unbalanced. You said there was, there was a lot of fertility in here because it was built up of different materials, but nothing, you would almost think it was pushed, but it isn't pushed beyond what naturally the soil could produce for it or give it. I mean, it produced apples in its second year. Look at that. Yeah, this is amazing growth. And the other one was these. This is wild. This is absolutely crazy. You gotta see the thickness of these. I've never seen red current stems get the, I mean, it's the size of my thumb. One year growth. That's not frequent. I mean, I, I kind of drool at this because I know what I used to use as propagation material, and this would have been considered a really nice piece, really pencil thickness at the very top. At the bottom, yeah, this is, you're gonna have 100% propagation with this kind of propagation material. This will be incredibly easy to propagate these plants, and next year you're gonna get a first big harvest. And how much do you get out of some of these plants? It, it takes our volunteers weeks to pick all the fruits here. We're thinking about, you know, opening to some volunteers, other, others than members of, the, uh, of this uh, nonprofit organization, because we'll need help, basically. Just as a point, this is, it's called Collective 21, yeah. and it's a, it's a nonprofit really with the goal of one demonstrating what you could do and the city has given them this land so it's, it was expensive land that that you have to pay for right 
They, the, the city had to pay for it. Yeah, but yeah, we get it for free. For yeah. And then gave it to them because they could show that they could, they want to try something to get it. And now how much available does the city put at your disposal if you wanted to expand? It's pretty open. <laughs> you haven't decided how much we're, you want to take on. We're trying to stay within 10,000 square meters or 100,000 square feet. We're trying to keep it within this size. That's two, but uh, two the acres. city'd be great, be, be very happy if we'd move, move along and, and develop two or three hectares more or That's four or six. six. Six to eight or nine acres yeah. more. But that starts to be a very producing garden. So, And we, all of this harvest is, it's everybody just eats it, right? You guys? Basically, we have members. Everyone, since it's a collective garden, nobody has a parcel, you know. We all share work. Everybody, you know, we share equal amounts of food when we, of crops, when we, before we leave. But the excess, which is significant, goes to food banks. And um, we're developing relationships with several food banks because there's a lot of food. Boucheville's food bank cannot handle what we produce. So we're opening up to Longueuil and to uh, saint Amable, all the neighboring cities, because this is producing. I do talk about in the marketing course of our master class. I talk about perfect location. This is yeah. perfect location. Yeah. I mean, they're between two pretty large cities, right between, and they're right on a bike path. So on the weekends, it's hundreds, traffic, hundreds bicycle of traffic. Bikes, hundreds of bikes. And you know, as much as we've been told that this was supposed to be sort of crappy land, what I find is since it's so well located, it's, it's like paradise. People, all people, when we garden, all the time people stop, take pictures of the, uh, the sunflowers, and then they ask questions. Oh, we've seen the, the garden expand and what's happening. And when they see that it actually works, they're excited and most of them want to join the, uh, the, uh, the gang. So uh, we're very happy about it. So location, location, location. Location is a Believe lot. it or not, even with a foot of, or 30 inches or, you know, between 30, 30 inches, centimeters, 30 centimeters to, to a meter of, of, uh, of soil, even if we're, we have these conditions, the location is so great, it's full sun, the St. Lawrence River is over there, it's always, we have great sunsets over here, we always stay for the sunsets, we come from the gardening and we stay for the sunsets, so location, 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 yeah, I, I totally agree. And it even gets better because this is only year two. So basically when we started the garden, we started with this demonstration, demonstration patch. It was a lasagna, but we added, we didn't, we, we, we tried to experiment. We unfortunately put compost in there. We shouldn't have because it's, so it was about a meter high or three foot high. Now it's gone down by about 50%. We planted this, this pear tree, it's a rescue pear tree. It's, a, it's on dwarfing rootstock, by the way. Uh, um, and we planted this one and we've established this. So this one we planted in 2020, October. Uh, so three years. So yeah, so 21, 22, 23. So, and we've established the, this the year after. So we have uh, strawberries, we have lavender, we have, um, Black currant. Black currant. There are 15 species here of plants uh, mixed together. And I mean, we're trying to break the tree. <laughs> we'll have a lot of work to try to, to calm it, to tame calm it. it. And yeah, yeah, yeah. But as soon as we, as we, uh, you know, fold some, some branches like this, you see flower buds and we've had uh, two years of crop two years cropping already yeah. so so far yeah so far but next year is going to be a big job to uh, bend all of these branches and make it produce in 2025 i'm just looking at this because you did we saw the three-year succession to get to this yep you must spend hours and weeks maintaining these beds eh? oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah actually no one's picked any weed from here no one's had to do any nope. maintenance in nope. here so nope. just to show you that 
once you get it set up and this one the right choice of plants because strawberries are a ground cover they will run and fill any available space and you probably got a few strawberries out of here oh boy yes and yeah they're all producing black currants uh, they're they're extremely productive this cultivar is extremely productive so basically once the soil is covered what it wants to do naturally well it becomes a forest it becomes what it's supposed to to look like so we the wood chip thing uh i, I don't I don't see us applying wood chips in the foreseeable future. Um, I, I maybe down the road, but I don't actually see a lot of wood chips. It's it's oh. there is a little layer, <laughs> but it's it's minimal. It's like at most it's an inch, and not even an inch. Ah. And then it becomes soil. Yep. So he went from the one foot three years ago. Yep. That's gone all the way down, but it's really. It really has mixed in with the clay, so it's no longer that hard brick clay that you started with. It's been amended, but it hasn't been mixed in. It's the soil life that's really mixed clay into the organic matter as it decomposes the organic matter. And you end up with, I mean, this is pretty wild growth for a pear tree. Uh, and everything grows so well. It really shows the potential of an area like this. If you are in a tough situation, a tough site, maybe you have you know, clay that you go, I can't do anything with. The big secrets here and the big takeaways here have been digging some trenches or trenches or paths, because why just have a, a trench? So they filled in the wood chips in the paths so that it really reduces maintenance. They've taken the soil from that area to build the bed and then they've added in some cases lasagna but now your recent ones it's it's keep it simple just take that soil so it's a cut and fill you're cutting soil from here filling it here and then just topping it off with a foot of wood chips and after three years I mean I think pretty well anything you put in here now will just grow like crazy you've got good sun I could see having an island like this every 15 or 20 feet and your fruit trees and in fact they're still small they're growing like crazy but they will completely occupy or or create some shade over these beds yeah it's pretty wild when people don't i have sand so it it's we're at complete opposite ends of the soil scale and so these i mean I can't even crush this. It's so hard. It's it's almost like a brick. There, now it broke up a bit. And it goes from this, which is what is that one foot of topsoil here. And this is topsoil. Because yeah, it's this is, it, this is as good as it gets. When this it, is good. <laughs> this is topsoil. Without working. But yeah. then when you add the wood chips and it's given a chance to mellow and get amended with the organic matter. I mean, can you actually put anything in there? That would be on the edge. That would be on the edge, but you, you but start seeing you holes. You start and, seeing. Yeah, warm holes. But look, it hasn't rained for. Three weeks almost. Three weeks. And the moisture is right and there. And uh, the moisture is right there, yeah. So it's, it's as far right, as holding this water, this is an incredible sponge. This is moist, yeah. And these plants, even though it hasn't rained in, in weeks, these plants are, are not showing any signs of water stress. So a path system that does double, triple duty even. And boy, I, I really thought you'd need to see this because if some of you are in a tough situation and you say, yeah, you know, I wish I wasn't, don't wish. Take time, think and try things. This is five years of trial and error. Figure out what works on your site and then expand from there. Do little beds, do experiments, try it. But if you're in clay, my goodness, get as much wood chips on that as you can and you will create soils that it's, it, it's insane the growth in a year here. And this would be incredible to see in five years from now how much these young fruit trees now, which are already starting to produce in the second year, how much when they're fully producing, 
Wow, it'll be an awesome sight. Vishal, thanks so much for having us here Thank today. You. It's been great. We'll put links to his website. He has uh, his YouTube channel in French for those who can understand in French. But there's so many experiments that have been done here over the years. Thank you very much for having us here. Thank you very much.